Sports Arena, Fox Sports Radio, 1070 The Zone, WKII. I have to admit, I've got a really special guest. This young lady, even though she's self-quarantined like the rest of us, kind enough to join me today. She is on the NFL Network. You can catch her every Monday through Friday between 7 and 7.30 on Total Access. She is one Miss MJ Acosta. MJ, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, Eric, making the... Today's isolation a little less boring, for sure. Listen, I really appreciate it. So I definitely want to talk to you about a couple of things going on since you are out west out there. The NFL has expanded to the 14 teams for the playoffs, and I just wanted to get your outlook on things considering the fact that the NFC West has really made some changes, first off with the addition of DeAndre Hopkins to the Arizona Cardinals and the fact that Todd Gurley is no longer with the Rams. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, the NFC West just in and of itself has been really interesting over the past two seasons and how dramatically the division has shifted. And I think the extended playoffs only takes that up a notch. It's more competition to me means better football. I, I love the fact that now, you know, a team that you thought maybe was out of your purview and out of your rearview mirror is now breathing down your neck because there's an extra spot there to get into into the playoffs and to really be able to compete um, in the postseason. So I really like that. I do, however, given everything that's going on with the pandemic, we don't know how this is going to impact the season schedule. I think it will be an interesting challenge, though, for every team across the league in terms of how they approach sort of the sustainability of something like this in, into the extended season, given that there's a very high likelihood that the summertime training that you get into with a team could be limited. So I'm thinking way, way far ahead. But I think overall, this is a thing that's, that's going to light a, a deeper fire in these guys and in these teams um, as they get cracking here. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think the one thing that is kind of going to set me apart from a lot of people is, whereas most people are going to be a little hesitant with the start of this, doing to going from immediately from a 12 to a 14 team playoff. I'm very excited for it. I love the fact that we're getting to see an additional team get in. Does it mean that a team at you know 12 and four has to face a number seven seed? Yes, but for me, it's just another exciting game that we get to watch and enjoy. I'd love to get your thoughts on Marcus Mariota leaving Tennessee and now being a Las Vegas Raiders. How do you think he's going to implement under John Gruden and working in that system? Well, this certainly has been a dramatic storyline, hasn't it? Yes. Um, <laughs> We're really reading a little bit too far into it, especially given the fact that these guys haven't even been in the same room together. But I will say this, historically, you think back to that draft where Mark Mariota was selected, um, John Gruden has always been a fan of his. Equally so has Mike Mayock. Um, so Marcus himself said one of the biggest draws of this deal was to be in, a, in an environment on a team that truly believed in him and his talent um, and what they can pull out of him there. That being said, I am a, I am very much a fan of Derek Carr. I think that despite what the record has been for the team the last couple of seasons, he continues to be productive and put up numbers and put up career highs in all of that. And I think he's a high-character guy. So now you have two high-character quarterbacks who are only going to breed healthy competition in one another. To me, this is a good problem, for lack of a better word to have, they're really going to push each other and I think make each other better and really set the tone for, for a very competitive summer leading up to the team going to a brand new city, a brand new stadium. So I think this is a good thing. Speaking with MJ Acosta, make sure you guys follow her on Twitter at MJ Acosta TV. MJ, you were speaking of quarterbacks and we know that Tyrod Taylor has now been the number one guy or has taken over the position as the number one quarterback for the Chargers since Phillip Rivers went to Indianapolis. Under Anthony Lynn, do you think Tyrod can lead the Chargers to a playoff berth? It would certainly be interesting to see Taylor be the QB1 there. If nothing else, so that the rest of us can spend an entire season going back and forth between Tyrod and Tyrod. Um, and that's correct pronunciation. <laughs> Very true. Um, I just think when you think of the Chargers um, and, and really what's at stake here for this team, there's still a quarterback of the caliber and talent of Cam Newton, shoulder issues notwithstanding, um, I think it's, it's tough for me to to see them pass up on someone like that, especially because they lost out on the whole Tom Brady situation and they cleared out all that cap space, uh, cap space presumably to bring on a big name, big time QB. 
um, now that Philip Rivers is no longer with them. So I, I really lean hard on this Cam Newton to the Chargers storyline because I think it would shake things up um, for the Chargers quite a bit. And it's something they, that they need for a few reasons. Not just so they can be hyper-competitive again because a healthy Cam Newton is Super Bowl caliber quarterback. As yes. yes, he is. But to bring that star power um, that is really needed to compete in terms of a fan base in Los Angeles would be huge for them, especially with them sharing a stadium with the Rams um, in one of the biggest cities in the country. Yeah, very true. Last question, and then I am going to let you go back to being self-quarantined. And again, thank you for joining me here on the Sports Arena. So I have to ask you about the reigning defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. In two years, Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, that whole entire organization have just kind of gotten the proverbial monkey off their back and now have a Super Bowl championship first time in 50 years. Is this headquarter, head coach quarterback combination, I combine the two for people, um, is this the start of a, you know, creating their own legacy there in Kansas City? You know, I think that the Chiefs organization is really building on something. They head now into 2020 looking to get back-to-back Lombardi, which is nearly impossible to do, right? But, you know, recently they restructured Sammy Watkins' contract um, to gain some cap space there and begin that pursuit. Um, but they have quite a few elements there, starting with um, Patrick Mahomes. So in one of only three QBs with 50-plus passing touchdowns a season, along with multi-NFL MVP, uh, multi-time NFL MVP and Super Bowl champions, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. So he's in very good company there. But you got to think about the fact that Mahomes is going into his fourth season, just his third as a starter, and he's just scratching the surface and is already an NFL MVP and a Super Bowl MVP. That's insane to me. He's just starting out. Then you have Andy Reid, who is on the level, not only is he one of the most likable coaches, one of the most likable sports figures, I think, across the league, um, but he's only one of eight NFL coaches in NFL history with over 200 regular season wins. So you combine the two of them, you've seen what they've built in just the past couple of seasons, and I think it's magic. Not only that, I think they have a top-tier offense just overall. So what they're doing there, and even though their defense was only seventh over um, over the span of the full season, they did tremendous work in the, in the NFL from week 11 on last year. So they're building on that side of the ball as well, and they have so many guys just coming back, I think, this is the team that everybody is chasing now in the NFL, and it makes me real excited um, for the Chiefs. Oh, yeah. And as a guy who, you know, Andy Reid was my former coach, even though I do live down here in Florida, I bleed green. I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan from sun up to sundown. So I was very happy for him. You know, they call Patrick Mahomes a human cheat code. I mean, to see him come back from injury like he has and for them to do what they're doing, as you just previously mentioned, just in the last couple of seasons, I just needed to get the thought of someone who's actually out there and, and, you know, covering these teams and just getting that kind of inside information. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Oh, man. And it's a young, like, really exciting team. I I was able to travel to Mexico for the international game that they played against the Chargers um, in Estadio Azteca, and the energy that that team brings, um, the international appeal that they now have with Patrick Mahomes, I mean, Everyone wants to rock the curls. And can you blame them? I'm just trying to do a curl. <laughs> we'll see if we can make that happen. But I think that it's, a, it's an energized franchise um, with a tremendous coach at the helm who, who grounds them all um, and, and really just a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. It's, it's really fun to watch. Listen, as long as he doesn't put any more ketchup on steaks, I'm good. Oh, man. I mean, that's a, that's a whole other radio interview that we could go into. I'm sure. Hey, MJ, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this was MJ Acosta, NFL Network reporter. Make sure you catch her on Total Access Monday through Fridays at 7 p.m. Follow her on Twitter at MJ Acosta TV. I had such a great time meeting you in Indianapolis. Thank you so much for being on the show. And, uh, you know, stay safe. I look forward to seeing you back on TV and back on the sidelines soon enough.